lesson is a tune Mel Cow Blues and it's all part of what's going on on my site Rhythm Month the month of May 2017 this is the fourth lesson or installment I have for Rhythm Month and as you saw I was doing Western swing style comping or backup in the rhythm part so this lesson's going to come with the two solos that you saw and heard and then an in-depth rhythm lesson along with chord diagrams and lead sheets as well. So we'll talk about everything in depth about the G6s, this little walk I was doing, um, the C7, C sharp diminished, and uh, I'm gonna break down all those chords and any little, <coughs> any little walk-in I did or ornamentations, okay? So it's gonna be really cool, again I've got uh, I'm going to be adding rhythm lessons all month at my site, so make sure you're on board to check that out. So if you'd like to purchase the full-length version of this one, as it's just a preview here on YouTube, you can click the link below and it will shoot you onto my website, and there you can do so. It'll come with about 45-50 minutes of video, PDF tabs, three backing tracks, and of course, the, again, the, the chord diagrams and a lead sheet for this tune. And if you really like the way I teach and approach learning, you can learn about being a member. There's another link down there. For a yearly or monthly fee, access this lesson and over 350 lessons at the site, including my three courses and the video exchange program. So a lot of cool features for a premier member. Um, the set is dedicated to helping you become a better player. All right, so give that a check. Uh, give that a look if you're interested. For now, we're going to start walking through the lead part here for Milk Cow Blues in the key of G. I uh, hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. All right, so let's go ahead and start breaking down Milk Cow Blues here. We're going to do the first arrangement, or the first time through the solo. And uh, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of um, syncopation, hammer rounds, and pull-offs. Um, again, the first arrangement I think is a little bit easier than the second one, but so let's dive in here. Um, I'm going to play the first three measures for you, and then we'll break them down slowly. It starts on beat four there, so playing the melody right on the head here, so one two, three. All right, pretty straightforward there. I'll do it again. Ready, go. And remember, any markings on the bottom of the staff are pick directions. Follow those closely. Staples are the downs and the Vs are the ups. And uh, any markings above the staff are left hand fingerings, little numbers it will be. So, again, it starts on beat uh, four there, has a zero three hammer on on the D string. And then we got a quarter note, open G in the next measure. And we got some eighth notes, so open G, third fret, D again, and then two zero pull, and then two three hammer that D string there for the most part. So we'll measure two. All right. Then the next measure, again, open G. It's a quarter note there. And then uh, open G again. Then the third fret D. And those are two eighth notes, so they're quicker, obviously. Then open D, then zero three hammer on the D. So measure three exactly. Again, go. Can we 
are swinging um, all of this stuff. So the eighth notes are swung, long, short, long, short, long, short, okay? And um, yeah, let me play those three matches in context a little bit. Um, one, two, three. And if the ham rounds or pull-offs kind of trip you up a little bit, feel free to just to take those out and put the pick directions in there. You could... I like put those hand rounds and pull-offs in there to make it sound a little smoother. So we got one, two, three. Okay. So let's move on to the next few measures here and get some syncopation going on. They sound like this. Ready, go. G quarter note there, and then two zero pull on the G, and then I'm gonna catch the fourth fret on the G, and then open G, and then as you see there, it's tied over. So it's gonna be held for a whole beat, but it's gonna be held. So the note in parentheses is not played. We're gonna see this a lot. So again, the note in parentheses is not played. It's tied over two, and when we have a tie. We hold for the duration of the two notes combined, okay, or the value of the two notes combined. So in this case, it's a quarter note, but it's on the, it's, it's tying over to a downbeat. So again, it gives it this syncopated feel. Four and, and on the end of four, we play the um, first fret on the B. pick direction there you, you could put it in there but I wanted to kind of follow that melody as best I could one more time ready go four and, and in the next measure I'm sorry ready go Two spots where it's syncopated though, right? We have two spots where it's tied over, I have notes tied over to. So one and two and three and four and on that last one there, it's open B string. So it's all on the B string, third fret, and then on the and of four we play the open B. So again, nothing on beat three, nothing on, and wait, what is it? Uh, nothing on beat two nothing on beat three. One and two and three and four and okay so really be working that out. Um, know your pick directions exactly. Know where the beat is. You need to know where the beat is. That's super important. So um, you can, I'm not going to get talk about necessarily how to do that right now. Um, it's as it is a little bit of a discussion, but if you know how to find the beat within the measure, it's super important. So, and then the next measure, first fret B quarter note, and then do two eighth notes, B string, high E open. And that measure is, um, second half of that measure is the same as the first half. Just holding down the first fret on the B. One, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so then uh, let me play all three of those measures in context, nice and slow. So, one, two, three, four.
again to ready go in the spots where those ties are at my right hand still is making those motions of going down or up but I'm just not plucking the strings okay kind of the same thing if I was strumming I don't just stop strumming if if the pattern, you know, if there's a tie in the pattern or anything like that. Again, my hand is still going up and down. I'm just to help me keep my time and help keep that fluidity. Um, but I'm just not picking the notes. So, again, this might be something that you need to work, have a metronome out and really work on. Uh, let's do it a couple more times a little faster. So, three, two, ready, go. three sound like this all right and then we start getting up the neck a little a little bit here um, so measure seven again it's a C sharp diminished chord here so I, I'm going to kind of uh, bring forth that root note of the chord there C sharp second fret of the B and it's kind of like the same rhythm as the measure before it just um, some different notes, of course. Well, this one. So, so one, two, and three, four, and so B, B, E, B, B, E. And the next measure, third fret on the B with my third finger, quarter note, and then five, three on the high E, back to five on the B, three on the B. And then five on the G, and then three on the G, and I'm gonna hammer on to the fourth fret. That'll be the downbeat of the next measure. So again, we're gonna have lots of this kind of um, syncopated stuff where we hammer and pull off and tie over to downbeats. Um, oh, sorry, red measure eight, ready, go. So after I hammer on three to four, that's the downbeat of measure nine, then th three on the high E, three on the B string, and then right here I have to go back to the third fret on the G and I have to just kind of roll over with my first finger right there. It's kind of a little tricky move, but they it um, happens all the time. We, we kind of roll over, and then so right here, third fret on the B, sorry, third fret on the G string, third fret on the G, then we hammer to the fourth fret again. And then fifth fret on the D. And that's a root note. G, G, no, G note. And then two open B strings. Two, three. 